not maintain that standard, we will work just as hard to get them unelected. So this is, this is good for the people because not only do we help to get them in, but we also help to monitor them, which is sort of what, what your job is as well. But I think that we can get down to the nitty gritty when we have more people involved and more eyes on the issue. And another thing about that is I myself am one of those people who did not realize how much power as a person, as a citizen I have when it comes to this whole process. And I think it's really important for each one of us to educate ourselves. And one of the things we want to do, a component of this, is to help provide that education. We're working on that right now, how to make that happen. But we want each person to know exactly what the process is, how their vote does matter, what does constituent mean? You know, how as a constituent do I have any control? I've been talking to a lot of people and I, I'm surprised at how many naysayers, you know, that, oh, there's nothing you can do about it, it's hopeless, you know, and all this. I'm really disappointed in that and I don't agree with that and I think that if we knew and realized how much effect we do have uh, and, and the majority would stand up, that's how the, the loud minority is so effective because they are loud. They do know how much strength they have. And I think it's important for us to educate and, and to activate so that we will become even a louder majority. Um, no, I know I read a little bit just in the press release, but why 4th of July? What significance do you guys have with, with this date? That's a very good question, and I'm very glad you asked it. Um, the 4th of July has a lot of significance. That's the founding. That's when we declared our independence from Britain, and so it's an Independence Day. Well, I think it's been reshaped now to where we're sort of looking at it like, there's an independence, but do we want to become independent of our government now? Have they overreached their bounds? Are they getting involved in too many issues? So I think independence has a lot of significance in that it ties in very well with what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, and also, as, as she made a great statement to me earlier today, she said, we're going from independence to dependence, but we want to try to stop the dependence. We want to become more self-sufficient as our founders had envisioned and how we had started out and become more responsible for ourselves individually. Exactly, and that's, that's exactly what I was thinking about and lamenting is, is this our last Independence Day? Is next year going to be Dependence Day? You know, honestly, what do we have to do now, today? Because we can't wait till next year. There, so much is going on ne before the next 2010 elections that are just going right by. There's, we have to act now. Um. I know I've also read in the, and you probably talked a little bit about it, but what exactly do you guys mean when you say abusive governments? What exactly are you guys getting at with that? Just talking about all the spending that's going on, the whole, the, the stimulus money, and what exactly are you, are you saying? You mean? I think, to me, the one that shocked me the most was when Barack Obama announced he's going to ask for special powers to come in and seize privately owned industries if they look as though they may go out of business and they're going out of business is going to affect the economy as a whole, that the government has the right to come in and seize a private company. You know, does that mean if U.S. Airways starts to look like they might go out of business or go bankrupt, that the government's going to come and take them over? I mean, that's probably extreme, but that's the idea. I just don't think that's American, and I, I think that's abusive. So do you see this as a recurring pattern that if the government continues to do this like they've done for the auto companies, that it will just continue to go on with other companies that might be having a problem, and that's why you guys want to do this type of thing, to speak out against that? Yes, we're trying to nip it in the bud. Basically, we, we've, seen, we've seen GM. That's a huge company. Most, most of the time what happens, as you're probably aware, is when a company gets into financial straits, they let the company reorganize under Chapter 11. The company restructures, changes things around, becomes leaner and meaner, and a, and a better you know, machine, as it were. Well, they did not allow that process to happen. They, they interjected themselves into the whole situation. And so now, what we feel like is, is that we have a government that is becoming overly intrusive into not only our personal lives, but into businesses and into all sorts of industry. Now we're talking about healthcare. Where does this end? When, at what point do we draw a line and say, okay, a government is, you're relocated to here, and individuals and businesses, you're relocated to here. I don't see a clear line. What I'm seeing is, is a line that keeps expanding and expanding. And, and uh, Dennis Prager puts it really, really well when he says that, uh, how does he say it? Bigger government, uh, what is it? As government grows bigger, people become smaller. The individual becomes smaller. Um, exactly. I know because it's 4th of July, while that is, you guys have the significance for that, it is a holiday, people have other plans. What kind of turnout are you guys expecting for the, for the parties? 
Well, we know that on April 15th, uh, Gilbert had around 2,000 from what I was told, and downtown Phoenix had 7,000. And we also know it is a holiday. It is going to be much warmer. However, we have had a, just, and I've spent all my minutes on my phone answering calls, and I'm spending all my time answering emails, and I think there's a lot of interest, and I, I suspect that it's going to grow exponentially. Great. Um, is, it, is this going to be just T-Bar? You guys going to, is it going to be like a freedom march in your talk about? Is there going to be a route for that? Or? The Gilbert Tea Party is going to be a formal uh, sit down and listen to some speakers who are well known and then some time at the end for the people to get up and use the microphone. The, the march that is going to happen at 4.30 downtown, that is a protest definitely and then we're going to be ending at the gates of the 4th of July celebration where we can interact with the general public and for this, the Capitol State Lawn, we are working very diligently to try and get the insurance coverage so that we can set up podiums, speakers, microphones, and uh, because of the state budget crisis, none of the legislators have been available to approve that. So it is public property. We are allowed to come down there and assemble. Uh, if we aren't able to pull through and get that insurance coverage, then we're just going to, people are saying, I'm coming any, anyways. I don't care. I'm going to show up. So I would say to them, come, and then we will provide you. That's the one that I want to make available for the general public to sound off. It's not going to be a bunch of famous speakers and people sit down and we entertain them for two hours. This is their time to speak out. Hopefully we'll have a sound system. If not, you can still hear. We can gather around and, and speak our minds and, and say what exactly we feel. There's a documentary that's going to be being filmed there. And so I think that's going to be, at least for me, the one I definitely want to see happen, even if we get that insurance or not, because that's the one where people are going to have that opportunity to speak their mind. And I think people really want and need to do that. And, and I would add to that, that if, in fact, they're, they're coming, if, if anyone out there has a blowhorn or whatever and wants to bring it, by all means, please bring it. And, you know, that way you can also... You know, we can add to the, right. to the effect. Exactly. With the understanding there will be structure. You, we can't just have 10 people out there with their bullhorns and going on. We will have structure. We're going to do it one person at a time, five minutes per person, that type of thing. But you will get your chance, and you can be there as long as we need to be there to get everybody heard. I know you were just talking about uh, the amount of emails and calls you're, you're fielding on this. How encouraged are you to see the amount of people that are, are interested in coming out for this? I'm really blessed by that. I, I am humbled and blessed that, that people really want to, to take action. Like I said, I've been listening to a lot of naysayers, and, and that could be discouraging, but it's completely cl clouded over by all these people that are just, they are writing to me, get, telling me their frustrations and whether or not they can make it or not, um, wanting to speak out. I really think that people really want to say and be heard what they're thinking. And and when they're emailing me, like I'm more than glad to use my minutes on my phone. I'm more than glad to use my time to answer them as best as I can. So it is it is very encouraging. That's great. Um, it's just about all I got. Anything else you guys want to add before we wrap it up? Yeah. Anything? Maybe just give like the details about when time okay. and place, and that'd be great. <laughs> All right, for the Gilbert Tea Party, and again, there's going to be many tea parties across the state. You can go to ArizonaTeaParty.com to find one in your area. But the ones that I know specifically locally here is Gilbert, 8.30 in the morning at the Civic Center, the Northeast Lawn is, I believe, where they're having that. Then from around noon, starting at noon, um, people are going to be showing up at the state capitol, I think, at 1 o'clock. 1.30 is when the official time, and we're going to start um, doing the proceedings there. And then at 4.30, at the corner of Columbus and Central Avenue, there's an empty parking lot. We're not going to park there, but we're going to assemble there and for about a half an hour. And then at 5 o'clock, we're going to begin our march going north up to Indian School and Central. And so there's a parking garage just to the west of uh, Central and Columbus. And there's also the light rail. And I would just recommend people come down there, bring your flag. If you have a flag, bring your sign. Uh, red, white, and blue balloons, whatever you want to bring, uh, bring especially bring water. Yes. <laughs> and your cameras. And come on down and and uh, be a part of this. I think this is going to be history making. All right.